Okay, good, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Yi Xin Xu from University of Bristol. So it's my uh, pleasure to have a presentation with you to share my first experience in our cost effectiveness modeling. Uh, so I'm in the same project with Howard. So uh, it's the same project and uh, uh, did a cohort, same, uh, cohort discrete time mark model in NIPS part. And uh, this model comparing the implant for knee replacement surgery using C++ optimization, uh, value of information analysis, and a shiny interface. First of all, I wanted to introduce myself. Uh, as you may notice, I mentioned I'm new in uh, health and uh, our uh, health economics modeling and R. That's because of my education background. I studied applied mathematics during my undergraduate and did a master degree in finance management and uh, uh, economics. And then I studied my PhD project in health economics uh, in 2020, uh, and my research uh, is more relevant of the comparison of multi um, of multi-state modeling in cost-effectiveness analysis. Okay, let's back to the project. So the aim of the study today is to evaluate what is the most cost-effective knee replacement for patients in different characteristics. The characteristics here was defined as um, gender and age. The gender was, derived, uh, was divided into male and female, and the age was separated in five different age bands from less than 55 years old to more than 85 years old. And we conducted a market model based on cost effectiveness analysis of 12 knee implants widely used in UK. Uh, to achieve this goal, we uh, use a mark model using internal state to model outcome after total knee replacement. And the data we used are transition probabilities, cost qualities, and mortality rate. Okay, here is the map of the model uh, for the patient after total knee replacement. They are divided into three time period, less than three years after primary total knee replacement from three to 10 years after total uh, knee, uh, knee replacement and more than 10 years. Uh, they are separately named as early, middle, and late. For patients after their primary total knee replacement at the post TKR less than three year health state, they may experience a revision and enter their health state post early revision. And if no revision occur, they will enter the post TKR from three to 10 year health state. And the, in, in the same case, they will enter in the middle revision or the more than 10 years or late revision. For patients have second or higher revision, they will enter into the post second revision state. And patients uh, are at risk of dying in any state. For this model, the circle length is one year and time horizon is 100 minus initial age of different age bands and the discount rate is 3.5 percentage. And for the data we used, first is the transition matrices. The transition probabilities was calculated by the log hazard rate of each implant for different patient group. Um, and this data was obtained from the National Joint Registry. And for the mortality rate, it depends on both current time because the mortality rate will be increased by the patient age. And also, uh, patients also have the probability that die cause of the surgery. And then for the cost, we mainly include the surgery cost and the cost of each implant. And all this data were also obtained from the NGI and also the NHS reference website. Um, and the last data part is qualities. Um, qualities used in this model was com uh, combined by the utility and the disutility of revision and then multiplied by the transition probabilities of each two, uh, each two health states. Okay, here is the code part. All the uh, code 
you can find in this GitHub uh, repository. You can download and run it in your own computer or laptop. Uh, in this repository for the data folder, the Excel sheet cohort model input includes the uh, include the data of log hazard rate of second or higher revision rate and the, the utility, this utility of the patient, the cost of each implant and the surgery, and also the UK life table and the mortality rates mortality rate caused by the surgery. And for the other Excel sheet named by gender and their initial age includes the log hazard rate of each plant in this cor uh, corresponding patient group. And for the uh, code folder, the NIPS main is the main code that can run the whole project and the other R code are modulized by function like the generate input parameters, cost qualities and the net benefit. I have to say here that all the code is adapted by the teaching um, model in the short course, economics evaluation modeling using R. If you have interest in this, um, in this code, you can look for the information through the link here. Uh, and here is the map uh, of how I modulized the, this project. First, to generate the input parameters and then generate transition matrices, costs and qualities, and then use the generate net benefit function to calculate total cost, total qualities, incremental net benefit, and the ISOs. The generate net benefit functions were optimized with C++, and I will, go, uh, I will talk this after I go through the code. And after we obtain this uh, result, we analyze this result with BCEA package, at first, we plot a CAC panel and then use a Gaussian process regression to do a value of information analysis. Uh, and finally, use a shining package to create a graphical user interface. Okay, uh, let me go through the code with you. Uh, here is the NIPS main code, uh, library the package and call the functions uh, set the global simulation param uh, parameters, the state uh, treatment, uh, that is the implants in this project, and then the characteristics of patients, the age band and uh, gender, and then we call the generate input parameters function and the net benefit function here. Um, let's see what the input parameter function look like. Uh, here it's include the um, the input parameter function include the log hazard rate of each implants from first revision, second revision, and higher revision, and also the cost of surgery and uh, each implants, and also the qualities of each health state. Uh, we can will take a bit of here. Each parameter have 1,000 samples here. And uh, many times. And for here is the log hazard rate of first revision less than three years for each implant from three to 10 years for each plant and more than 10 years for each implant. And also the second revision in the three time period, early, middle, and late, the higher revision log hazard rate, cost of revision, qualities of each health state, and also the cost of each implants. Okay. 
And after we generate the input parameters, we can get the um, model output by net benefit function. Uh, in this function here, we optimized it with C++. So here call the R C++ and then uh, set the function as the original way to do, the traditional way to do Markov model in R, uh, set the cohort vectors, cost of qualities, and the discount, discount vectors. Mm. Because in the traditional way to do Markov model in R by loops, it will cost a lot of time to finish it because the uh, because we use loops in three layers for treatment, uh, samples, and also circles. Um, especially for this kind of project that we need to use this code for different uh, type of patient uh, implants and also need to do further sensitivity analysis that needs lots of time to to run the code. So to reduce runtime, we use Laplay with C++ to instead of the loop. First here, to change the cohort vectors from data frame to uh, matrices, and then um, apply the Laplay function to reduce the runtime, and then use the um, cohort vectors as matrices to calculate circle costs and qualities and generate the uh, total cost and qualities. After we get this result, we can calculate the incremental net benefit and ISOs and uh, uh, return this as the result. Uh, that is how the model output look like. And I can show. Yeah, here is the uh, total cost, total quality net benefit, and uh, an incremental net benefit with 1,000 sample and uh, ISOs for each new implants. And after we get this result, we can use BCE package to plot a CAC panel and also create a table to include the result, the quality cost incremental net benefit with their mean and the 95 credible interval and the ISOs for each plant. And we also use the uh, BCE package to do a value of information analysis to do the EVPPI. Um, we use our custom process procedures he a regression here uh, and set six parameters. Um, the first parameter is log hazard rate of first revision less than three years for each implant. And the second is from three to 10 years of each plant and also the more than 10 years for each plant. And we set the second revision and the higher revision together as one parameter. And the, the, next, uh, the next part of the parameter is utility part. Um, the qualities state post the total knee replacement as one parameter and the qualities of other health state as another parameters. So I think it's not very difficult to, um, to do the EVPPI with BCE package, but it uh, costs a lot of time to, to get the result. And the final part, uh, part is our shining here. I can run this code. Mm, this part is still in process and uh, need to debug. It has some yeah, bugs in it. So um, in the, it made time to run. For here in the stat bar, we can change the gender, um, male, female, and the age group here. Uh, and then use the checkbox to select which implants you want to be compared and uh, also the number of samples. Samples I set 100 here to let it run quicker. Uh, here is the cost effectiveness panel here. And uh, we want to have uh, another 
another main panel here to show the ISA table with their uh, incremental net benefit and ISAs, uh, but it's still in, in the process. Okay, I'll be quicker. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so here is the main code of this project, and uh, this is uh, how to use the Laplace instead of loop to um, optimize the function by C++. And uh, yeah, that's I want to show in the future that here is a result table to include the quality cost net benefit, incremental net benefit with the mean and 95% credible interval and their ISAs. And here is the EVPPI result tables. Um, it's very clear that the first revision probabilities parameter have very large value, especially for less than three year time period. Uh, that's indicate this parameter is very important in this project. Uh, and finally, I want to talk about my feeling of using R. Um, First of all, I think it's very convenient to use our language to, uh, for modeling. Yeah, it's highly flexible. That is, uh, gives the opportunities for users to modularize the code for easy updating and uh, adapting. Um, and it's also very um, reusability. So even if the assumptions of the code are changed, um, the users can just a minimal mod modification and then get the new results. And it has lots of useful package such as the BCE package and the Shining package I used in this project. It make modeling more easier. And also the R Studio is good for project management and collaboration in GitHub. Uh, here is the acknowledgement. Um, this study is funded by uh, NIHR and thanks to NIPS teams. Thank you. And the uh, end questions? Uh, yeah, as I mentioned before, I took a short course um, in economics evaluation using R. And um, I think this course is very useful. And I uh, study how to use R and uh, how to uh, conduct a mark model. Yeah, so I adopted this project mainly uh, by the teaching model in that short course. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Well. <laughs> so it's also really impressive. And there's a lot kind of there, a lot of context. So you've got base R, you've got using packages, BCA, and then you've got um, Shiny. And I'm just wondering what, which bits of it did you find easiest to pick up and which bits did you find hardest uh, with SQL plus and Uh I think the most challenging thing for me is uh, R Shiny, actually. Uh, as you, you're saying, I'm not finished yet. It is still in the process. Um, yeah, so I think it's difficult for me and I need to study more to uh, finish it. So um, I'm just wondering, uh, uh, okay, thank you first of all for the nice presentation. I think it's, uh, uh, it's quite a, a, a great and interesting project. So I wanted to just ask, uh, now that you're using actually and uh, uh, you're doing simulation processing and we know uh, from uh, experience that uh, so the more data bit increases when using a chain it becomes uh, a little bit slower so i'm wondering do you have any plans to uh, uh, uh to to have it i mean to optimize the shiny app whenever you are simulation pro just uh, one next time by now you have to wait for a couple of hours to get the update yeah. Yeah. So repeating the question was any plans to optimize the channel up given those simulation model that would take a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. Uh, yeah. 
Yeah, it's a good question. Yeah, I think it needs to do some optimization on it to make it quicker and also in the EVPPI results. Yeah, it takes a long time to finish it. Maybe like the um, mean mark model, the net benefit function to use C++ to optimization it, but I'm not sure it will go what's happening in the next step. Yeah, thank you. It's still so much to wait. So I don't think you'll be able to optimize the code to run fast enough to be useful in that shiny app. Because even if you bring it down from two hours to say an hour, it's still people aren't going to wait. But there's alternative methods where you can store the results in a on a remote server and then email the user and say they're ready to be seen. Now. Yeah, but I think uh I shiny is not slow as um, um, less um, several hours. It may I think it's less than ten hour, ten minutes. Yeah. Okay. So that was a suggestion from Rob there that it's going to take a really long time to get our show to email the user and then the results. Yeah. Which is a good thing to be aware of. And um, can you get our show to open, like, say, your base case results without having to load it? So, for example, when you first open it, the results are already there. It's already run that model. So, if you want to run a new model, it would take time. But if you were running the, your base case, it would already be pre run. Is that possible? Yeah, I think so. Yes. <laughs> so yes, we found out our shiny slow fruit so those days are probably run for. Yeah. All right. There's a question from James in the chat. Um, did you consider decision makers' needs when considering what to put in the shiny interface? Yeah, that's that. And from James in the chat, did you did you consider decision makers' needs when deciding on what you're putting in the Uh, I think for the shiny interface, yeah, in, in the current shiny interface, I uh, put the uh, characteristics of genders, maybe for the users, they can select the corresponding patients, like their genders or age, and then uh, set the number of samples, and then we'll get the either table results to show which uh, which implant is most cost effective and then give the CAC panel to see how, how the probabilities of each implant to be the most cost effective. I think it would be useful. <laughs>